you to have it like never before. Oh yes God. Oh for grace to trust him more. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody put their hands together and give them a praise right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, now open up your mouth. You praise. Come on, you can praise him with your lips now. Come on. Just thank him right now. Come on, just begin to thank him. Come on, just begin to verbalize and thank him. Begin to verbalize and thank him. Come on, begin to verbalize and thank him. Come on, but come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to verbalize and thank the Lord. Begin to 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 thank Him for all that He's done. 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 Is He doing anything in your life right now? Is He doing anything in your life right now? My God, my God, my God. He's doing a great work in your life. And because of that, we should be grateful. We should be grateful. Hallelujah. Everyone standing on your feet. Hallelujah. As we prepare to go into the word of the Lord on today. Everyone get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Smartphone, tablets, whatever you're using whatever you're using to get the word of God. If somebody doesn't have one of those things, somebody share with your neighbor. Come on and share with your neighbor. Did anybody hug on anybody today before we, before we uh, go into the word of God? Did anybody hug somebody? Did you all hug somebody in the church on today? Before we go into the Word of God, why don't we just take a second? Let's, let's give give me something a little bit more upbeat, and let's just go around the room and let's just let's just 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 love on somebody. Let's just love on somebody and just tell them, "Welcome to the celebration." Come on, tell them, "Welcome to the celebration." Welcome to the celebration. Welcome to the celebration. Welcome. We welcome you. Hallelujah. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you in. We welcome you in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God is going to do something in this place on today. Come on, are you blessed today? Are you blessed today? Are you blessed on today? Hallelujah. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed where you come. You're blessed where you go on today. Hallelujah. You know that you're blessed. You are blessed people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number three. Acts chapter number three while you're yet still standing. Acts chapter number three. Hallelujah. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed where we come and when we go. Every stronghold is coming down on today. Can somebody just make that declaration out of your mouth? Say, every stronghold, every stronghold is coming down. Is coming down. Every, stronghold is coming down. every stronghold is coming down. Acts chapter number 3, and we will draw our attention to verses 19 through 21. Acts chapter number 3, verses 19 through 21. When you have it, say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. 
And the word of God reads, it says, Repent you therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive unto the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Amen. Somebody just say, Lord, Lord release the refreshing. Release the refreshing. Come on, say it like you mean to say, Lord, Lord release, the refreshing. release the refreshing. Now give God a praise. Give him a good hand praise as you take your seats on this day. Amen. Amen. Lord, release the refreshing. Re Lord, release the refreshing. The refreshing. The refreshing. The renewal. The revival. Lord, release the refreshing. This word of God found here in this, in this particular chapter of the book of Acts. The, the writer Luke, he's speaking in response to a miracle that had occurred. This miracle that occurred was vital because it was, it was uh, right after the day of Pentecost. It was right after there was a big growth spurt within the house of God. There was a big growth spurt in the kingdom. And as that big growth spurt happened, then they had they had to they started moving into the place of not just being in the upper room, but they brought the Holy Spirit to the church. Somebody ask your neighbor, say, did you bring the Holy Ghost with you today? Did you bring the Holy Ghost with you today? Now, you know, that sounds kind of strange, just kind of weird to, to, for that question to be asked when you're talking in the reality of going to church. But I've been to church and I've been going to church since I was 11 years old. So that's 30 plus years that I've been going to church. And every church that I've gone in has not had the Holy Ghost in it. So that, there's a question that needs to be asked. Did you bring the Holy Ghost to church with you. And when you start bringing the Holy Ghost to church with you, then some apple carts sometimes will get upset. There will be some things that will happen that will maybe seem to be a little strange. Well, in the Word of God, in Acts chapter 3, uh, what happened there was uh, there were two uh, apostles. They were in, they were moving and they were doing what they had to do. Peter and John, the Bible tells us, and uh, around uh, the, first, the first verse of chapter 3, it says, now Peter and John, they went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. And then as they went up to this temple at the hour of prayer, the Bible begins to recite unto us, or it is able for us to read back. And as we look here, it tells us that there was a certain man that was lame. There was a person that was coming that was crippled. And as he was crippled, he began to ask for alms. He began to sit outside the church and beg for money. And, and as they saw him, and as they saw him doing what he was doing, they looked beyond the physical need of what he had. And as they looked beyond the physical need, what began to transpire, Transpire, they began to walk into the spirit. Somebody say, I gotta walk in the spirit. In order for us to get the release of the refreshing, there has to be a desire for you to walk in the Spirit. There has to be a desire for you to walk in the Holy Ghost. There has to be a desire for you to want more from God than just saying that I am coming around the church or I'm coming to the church or, or I'm just going to be titled a nice little old everyday ordinary Christian, but somebody just tell yourself, say, there's nothing ordinary about me. 
There's nothing ordinary about you. Why? Because God has said that I'm not going to allow you in this season just to come around the church and not allow the church to come around you. I'm not going to allow you to just come to church week after week and have no change that can be seen to the naked eye and also to the spiritual eye because God is saying that he knows that every person that's on the face of this planet, they are not walking or living according to the dictates of the rule of God. And because they are not walking into those dictates of those orders, then God will use you as the walking miracle to provide discernible proof that they will be able to know that there is a God. Somebody say, when you're looking at me, you're looking at a miracle. Ah, uh, when you understand the fact that you are a miracle and that God is not going to just allow you to walk around and be around the church and not allow the church to become part of who you are, then you will start, and sooner or later, you are going to run into a John or a Peter. You're going to run into somebody that has the boldness to be able to look at you and say, no, that ain't what you need. Somebody tell your neighbor that, 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 that flesh thing ain't what you need. The flesh thing is not what you need. I know that we want to have all of the different things, you know, guys want to have wine, women, and song. Women want to have protection, and, and they want to have, you know, biceps and triceps and six-packs. But that ain't all that you need. We want to have fancy cars and fancy houses and everything. But all of those things mean nothing if you are stale. Somebody say, I cannot be stale. Ah, those things don't mean anything if you are just living your life on an ordinary and you are walking through in a staleness. But you are going, if you've been stale, I came to let you know John and Peter is on their way to have a talk to you. John and Peter is on the way to be able to speak some words over your life. And when they speak those words, there's going to be a transformation. Somebody just shout, I'm getting up today. Ah, uh, you're going to get up. Why am I getting up? Because I've been begging for something, but I really don't know what I need. I've been begging for a change, but the change that I've been begging for is not the change that I need. So, so John and Peter, they looked upon him, and they told him to look upon us. Somebody say, I got to get an eyeball to eyeball contact with my future. Ah, see, I know some of us don't like to look at nobody eyeball to eyeball. Hey, anybody ever, you ever look at somebody and they start looking away from you? You ever look at somebody and they start looking away from you? You look at somebody and they start looking away. They start looking away because they were nervous because they were scared you was going to read their mail. They were scared. Come on, somebody say, you, somebody say, you ain't got to close your envelope. Ah, uh, see, because even if you close your envelope, the reality of the matter is uh, that you still will be seen. That the, the reality of the matter is you will still be able to have a somebody will be able to be have a revelation concerning who you are. God is looking at us and he's saying uh, that regardless of how much you try to hide, when I come for you, I'm coming to pick you up from that place of your begging. You, you've been begging for the wrong stuff. Somebody just tell your neighbor, you've been begging for the wrong stuff. Uh, you've been begging for the wrong things in your life, and that's why you are still on the ground. You've been begging for the wrong things, and that's why you're still asking the wrong person. But somebody should say, God, send a John and a Peter. Uh, you need God to send a John and a Peter to begin to bring revelation as to what it is you really need. And when he sent them, and I'm going, I'm giving you a little backdrop to help us to understand about how we get to a place where we need the release of the refreshing. And so now we see John and Peter, they tell this man to look upon us, and as he looks upon them, they begin began to tell him what it is that they need. Can somebody just look at somebody that's on your left or your right and just say, you know what, I know what you really need. 
Ah, yes, I know what you really need. I know what you really need. I see they say, look at your eyeball to eyeball. Ah, some of yourself, some of y'all in the audience now, you're scared to look at the person on your left or your right because you're like, man, they're going to read my mail. And I tried to come in the church and hide what I was going through. But God is saying, what I'm getting ready to do in your life, I'm getting ready to send somebody to let you know what it is that you really need. How many of you have asked for a drink of water and what you really needed was a bite to eat? How many of you have asked for one thing and but you really needed something else? You will be asked for this particular aspect of your life to be completed. How many of you all have ever come to the altar and had somebody to pray for you? And when they you asked, they said, "What can you? What do you want prayer for?" I just want the Lord to bless me. How many of you have ever just said, "I just." Want want God to bless me. I want God to do something good in my life. But God is saying that now is the time for you to become specific about what it is that you need. See, because when you start going into the realm of the spirit, then God will begin to answer you past the place of your flesh. And when you start getting the spiritual answer, then God will begin to reveal himself and you'll begin Began to be raised up uh, from the place of your lowest estate. Uh, can somebody in here shout one more time and say, I'm getting up out of this place today. Ah, you're getting up out of the place today. You're not going to be where you were anymore. That because where you are or where you were is not appropriate for your future. It's not appropriate for what God really has for you. But you've got to start looking at it from the place of the spirit realm. So now they have now told this man, and they said, Man, you got to get up from here in the name of Jesus. And as they told him this, uh, he began to move uh, into what he really needed. Uh, he began to move, and so now he goes from being outside of the church uh, to being inside of the church, uh, and as he goes inside of the church, uh, his change uh, has now upset somebody. Uh, now, how many of you all are changing in your life? Uh, are you changing uh, in your life? Come on, if you're changing, somebody make some noise in here. I just need to know that because I don't want to make sure that there are people in here that are being changed in your life. And when you're being changed in your life, there will be somebody that will be upset about your change. There will be people that will not be happy concerning the change that God is doing for you. But when they are not happy about it, remember the same person that began to speak the miracle will walk with you until you can do it on your own. So now here we find in the word of God that now the man, he's jumping around, he's praising God, he's excited about what he's doing. It tells us in verse number 8 of Acts chapter number 3, it says from the New King James Version, it says, so he leaping up, he stood and he walked and entered into the temple with them, walking leaping and praising God. Ah, uh, understand y'all. People are they will like, they will talk to you and talk about you while you're down on the ground. But when you start walking amongst them and you start showing your change, everybody ain't gonna be happy about that particular thing. But what I want to talk to somebody in here about today is letting you know that you got to take your eyes and your ears off of the people and what they are looking at you and how they talking about you. You got to let them go. Somebody say, I see no evil. I hear no evil. See, when you stop, when you stop allowing yourself to see and hear the evil, the thing that you will start doing, you will start saying, I'm only going to speak blessings in peace. I'm only going to say grace in peace. I'm not going to start speaking negativity because somebody has spoken negativity about me. I can't worry about the fact that you don't like that I'm off the ground now. I cannot, I can't let you 
try to trip me up uh, and make my mouth start speaking uh, back into the place that I was. Uh, because when I was down on the ground, uh, I would only speak negativity uh, about where I was. Uh, but now that I'm up and I'm walking uh, and I'm dancing in the church uh, and I'm praising God, uh, I've gone from the outside uh, to the inside. Uh, can somebody just shout welcome in? Ah, uh, God is saying to us on today uh, that as you began to live uh, your life, uh, you began to live your life in the, in the, in the perspective uh, of what he has done for you. Uh, you're not living your life in the place uh, of where you were. Uh, I'm not going to live my life uh, being a captive uh, unto the lowest place, uh, but I'm going to start living my life uh, in the perspective uh, of what God has done for me. Uh, do I have anybody in this church that's just happy uh, to be inside of the church house? Uh, do I have anybody that's happy uh, to be inside of the place of God? Uh, do I have anybody in here that's just happy that God has done uh, a great thing in your life? If that's you, uh, come on, shout hallelujah in the house. Ah, uh, you understand, understand the man, he's walk, he's now walked with his Peter and his John into the church. Uh, he's walked in there with the people who rescued him. Uh, see, this is the thing that a lot of people forget about. Uh, they, they forget about the person uh, that has found them in their lowest estate, uh, and then they, for, they walk away from the rescuer. Uh, they walk away from the rescuer, but find the example of what this man has done. Now, this man said, you know what? Uh, I ain't going to walk away from you because you saw me uh, in my dirt and didn't judge me. Uh, how many people walk away from the people uh, that saw you in your dirt uh, and they still said, uh, you're going to be all right? Oh, uh, uh, you know, some of y'all, uh, you know, some of y'all, you know, God has brought you from a mighty long way, but somebody knows about your dirt. Uh, somebody knows about your skeleton uh, and they still talking to you. Uh, so you can't try to act like you all brand new now uh, because you have been uh, you blessed now you got a little title and a little handle uh, on your name uh, and so now you want to act like you don't know them no more oh uh, no uh, God is saying you got to be like this lame man uh, this lame man uh, is leaping uh, around with John and Peter do I have any leapers in this house on the day uh, oh come on get up Greg real quick uh, and just jump up on your feet and just start praising God right there start praising God right there start praising God right why do I need to praise him? Because he's brought me from my lowest place. Somebody shout glory in this house. Oh God, I feel you in this place today. Uh, understand uh, now, now there's some of y'all, I was looking here, come on, you know what, we, we're going to do a little abstract and uh, a little thing here. Come on, come up here, Greg, come on, reel up here real quick. Uh, now, you know, I, what I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at a whole bunch of people. Uh, get, grab that chair right there, Greg, grab that chair. Uh, come on, come on, we're over here real quick, real quick. Sitting right there, you just turn towards the audience right there, right? Sit in the chair, sit in the chair, right? Now, when I say, when I say, Bingo. When I say bingo, you gonna jump up and begin to praise God, all right? Uh, all right, so now, you know, everybody, this is how everybody be looking uh, in the church. Some of y'all, y'all glad you put those glasses on. That's good because some of y'all be trying to hide your eyes from people uh, again so that they can't see who you are. That's right, that's good right there. Somebody be trying, they be all distracted uh, and they all on their phone in the church. Uh, oh, see, but this is why, this is why some of y'all so stale uh, because you on the phone in the church. This is why some of y'all so stale because y'all got your sunglasses on in the church. Some of y'all so stale because you ain't paying attention to what God wants to do in your life. But what God is saying, the word is bingo Greg. Oh, hold on a second man. Everything begins to happen in your life. And now when bingo begins to happen in your life, come on, come on shout and praise him. Come on and shout and praise him. Come on and shout and praise him. And now as he's shouting and Praising up. Why is everybody else still sitting down? Oh God, help me in here right now. Hold on a second here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. 
Oh, God, let me, let me, let me. See, he, 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 here, he's the man that was in his lowest place. Now, I need somebody else to come on up here. Okay, we got somebody else coming. Come on, bro. Uh, Kyle, you up here. Come on, put the bass down for a second, son. Come on and, and, uh, and, and, and bring your chair and sit your chair next to Greg. Ooh, I, I, we'll I, we holler in a minute. Adam, you may want to get on the organ, man. I feel something here today. Come on, come on. I need you to move quickly. Move quickly. Move quickly. I need one more person. I need another. I need somebody else with a chair. Come on up here. Bring in somebody up here with a chair. Come on, real quick, real quick. Now, Greg, you got to stay here. You got to stay here. All right, Gary, we're going to sit right there. Huh? All right, all right, all right. Now, you know what? That's how we're going to do this. Here, you sit. Come on, slide over. Get in the middle, Greg. Now I need two more people. Jason, come here real quick. Tia, come here real quick. Come on, you stand behind Greg. Hurry up, come on, come on, come on. Facebook is waiting on us. You stand behind Greg. Now here we got a situation that's going on. We got... Brother Kyle, who been in church 20 years. We got Brother Gary, who been in church 25 years. Come here, I need you to come on around here now. Just lay down real quick. Lay down. You outside of the church. I need y'all to come in real quick. Come on, come on, come on, John and Peter. Come on. Come on, say the story. Come on here, come on here. Come on, just say, get up. Come on, you got to get up. Come on, move. You got to move quick. You got to move quick. You got to get up. Okay, so now that you're up, you're excited about where you're at now. So now did he, somebody say he's a day one Christian. Day one Christian. So now y'all, y'all was in the upper room, so y'all already know what had happened and everything. You walked all the way to the cross. You didn't, you didn't betray them, been forgiven, so you already know the redemption story. So now you're walking into the church. Come on, walk into the church. You sit down down there, Greg. Y'all come on, walk behind him. And now look at, now look at here how we got this situation. We got a 20 year, a 20 year vet and a 25 year vet looking all prim, got their arms all cross, uh, folding their arms all up, uh, looking down uh, their nose at him, uh, and they all looking down. They, uh, they, they ain't moist at all. They dry, and they brittle crumbs all on the floor in their life. Uh, they got all sorts of mess going on, uh, but they can't see themselves uh, because they're trying to look down their nose uh, at the person uh, who got a little dirt under their fingernails. Uh, they trying to look down their nose at the person who don't smell like Versace, and they looking down, they know that the person that don't that don't have they no chip on. They looking down, they know that the person who don't have the fresh weave and they beard is scraggly. They looking down, but this man has a plenty of moisture that's going on in his life. He's got plenty of freshness that's going on in his life because he just came up. Somebody in this place say, I need a refreshing. You need a refreshing if you've been sitting down there uh, too long in your seats. Uh, you need a refreshing from God. Uh, you need a release uh, from God. Uh, you need God's power uh, to begin to be released uh, again upon your life. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, you come to church week after week. Uh, and you come month after month. Uh, and you come year after year. Uh, and you are not moving forward uh, in your praise life. Uh, but what God is saying uh, that he's bringing forth the challenge uh, that's in your life today. Uh, you ain't spoken tongues uh, in two and a half years, uh, but you're still proclaiming uh, that you're full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, or somebody say, uh, there's a leak in this old field. Uh, but God is saying uh, that when you come to church, uh, there should be a plug. Uh, there should be some duct tape. Uh, there should be some gorilla glue. Uh, that should be something uh, that has got a hold of you uh, that begins to make you move uh, that I'm out of your norm uh, that just because uh, you've been around the church uh, for all these years uh, it don't mean nothing 
Ghost. Uh, if the Holy Ghost uh, is not moving in your life uh, on today, uh, God is saying uh, that there is a refreshing uh, that he's ready to release. Uh, but somebody in here uh, needs to say, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, because the Bible says uh, that those people, uh, they looked at the man uh, that was messed up. Uh, and then God began uh, to raise up in Peter. Uh, and raise up in John and they say this man has been raised by the power of the resurrection of the same Jesus that you killed but God had raised up and he raised him up and he brought him up and he brought him up to the place of ascension and as he ascended he then sent down that same power that's in us that gave us the ability uh, to tell the man uh, to look on us uh, because now we are uh, in the place uh, that God is saying uh, that you cannot live uh, by the place uh, of your first religious uh, exercise uh, or your first religious uh, experience. Uh, I don't care uh, that you prophesied uh, 26 years ago. Uh, what is that doing for me? Uh, on today, I, I don't care I, that if I shouted job when I was 15, I, I'm 46 now. I, I need a fresh shout job. It don't matter I, that I ran around the church I, when I was 25. I, I'm 59 now. I, I need God I, to move in my now, I, in my today. I, I need God I, to move like miracles I, and signs and wonders I, that should follow me. But if they ain't following us, that means you ain't believing us. So do I have a church uh, that can say, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry uh, for messing up. Uh, I'm sorry uh, for being so full. Uh, I'm sorry uh, for killing your flesh. Uh, I'm sorry uh, because I need uh, a refreshing. Uh, I need uh, a revival. Uh, I need uh, a release uh, of what my life. Release uh, your spirit. Uh, release uh, your power. Uh, release uh, your glory. Uh, release it. Uh, somebody praise him now. Come on and praise him now. Praise him now. No repentance. Uh, no release. Uh, no repentance. Uh, no release. Uh, no repentance, uh, no release. Uh, some of us are trying uh, to get into a place, uh, but don't want to process. Uh, but there's a repentance uh, that has to happen uh, in your life uh, so that God uh, can release uh, his glory uh, upon you. Uh, and when he releases the glory, come on, somebody, begin to praise him now. Began to praise him now for the release. Come on, somebody say, I need a release. Too many people. Too many people want restitution with no repentance. Too many of us, we want restitution, but we don't want to have no repentance. Somebody say, I ain't skipping no steps. You can't skip the step. Repent. So that the time of refreshing can come. And restitution can then be made. Yes, yes. Anybody here looking for restitution? Oh God. Restitution can come without repentance. Somebody say, I've been my biggest hold up. Yes. 
You've been your biggest hold up. You've been your biggest hold up. You have been your own worst enemy. You have not been your own best friend. Because you won't repent. You ever met somebody that ain't never wrong about nothing? Come on, say that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Everybody Come on, everybody put that hand up. Somebody say, hello, me. Hello, me. Jesus. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Some of us, if we sit here, we go through life. And God be talking to us. And we won't listen. Or we act like we listen. But when it's time to move, we won't move. Somebody say, I'm sorry, God. And the more that we won't move, the more dry your bread gets. We supposed to be the house of bread and the house of fresh bread, not six day old bread. You grow a penicillin on your bread. Got all that bacteria on your bread and trying to be relevant. You can't be relevant with stale hard, crumbled up bread. How many of us have tried? We say, then why am I not so appetizing? Have you tried to figure out why you weren't so appetizing? Have you tried to figure out why you're not appetizing? Hmm. Maybe what you're doing ain't fresh. What you're doing ain't fresh because your repentance and got stale. Wow. Wow. Say that again. You never, you never repent anymore. You just going through the motion as a church. You just going through the motions as, 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 as a preacher. You just going through the motions as a person. You just going through the motions in your relationship. Don't talk to me about problems in your relationship if you can never say you sorry. If you can't never say you're sorry, then you want your relationship to be stable. My God. You've got to start doing things and bringing repentance to the relationship so that it can be releasing of refreshing. Releasing of Refreshing. Somebody say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. The last thing, and I'm going to let y'all go. They looked down upon you because they had been in the way for too long. They had been in the way for too long. They knew all about the law. They knew all about the prophets, but had zero application thereof. You know all about what you know all about. But what are you applying to your life? So that when somebody who's doing the same thing that you trying to do come around, you look at them and say who they think they are. How God, how, how God going to use them? But I have to tell you, the key to your advancement is in your repentance. The key to your advancement is into your repentance. It ain't about how good you can sing. 
It ain't about how good you can preach. It ain't about how good you can dance or how good you can lay hands and prophesy. It ain't about all of that because they were sitting in the church while a broke down, busted up man was standing outside of the church. And they were walking past him. Who are you walking past that needs to be healed? Why are you on your way to be average? Who are you walking past that needs to be healed? Why are you on your way with your fineries on? With your best things on? With your, with your titles on? With your rings on and your crosses on? And your collars on? Why everybody is average. Why you you being average. But you walking past. You walking past. And then when somebody come into church, everybody turning around looking at them like they strange because they knew. Side trying to size them up instead of praising God with them. We gotta repent. Because if you touch something and it, and, it, and, it ain't, and it ain't flaky, but it's broken, it's breaking down to the touch, that means it's starting to get stale. I'm gonna give y'all, I'm gonna give y'all a homework assignment. Since you're some, maybe some of y'all don't believe me, I want you to take one piece of bread and I want you to sit it on your counter and leave it there, outside and unwrapped. Just leave it there for a couple of days. Pastor Gina says you may draw something that you don't want to draw. Uh, uh, oh. That's good stuff. Huh. Maybe that's why some of us are attracting some things that we ain't supposed to be attracting. Because we just laid our life out. And they, and they got no repentance. Everybody else is wrong in the church but you. I don't like how he preach. I don't like how she sing. And we drawing pestilence. So we get stale and drawing pestilence at the same time. In the meantime, can you come? I know I don't want to mess up your nice white shirt, but can you come on, lay back down, back down here, real quick, real quick? While we still got people laying on the ground, while we still got people laying on the ground, while we still got people laying on the ground. Some of us just need to repent from having pride. How dare us look down upon somebody that, that's born of a woman just like we're born of a woman. Some of us just need to repent from having a hot head and always got to be angry about everything. Some of us need to repent about being ungrateful. You, you you upset about the house you live in and why somebody else is homeless. Some of us get upset and, and, and we get you know we get upset about the spouse that God has blessed us with. When you got single people who are looking and longing and desiring to be married. And we have the nerve to go and cheat on them. We have the nerve to go and cheat because we can't seem to be grateful for what God has already blessed us with. And some of us just need to repent because we put our mouth on people that ain't did nothing to us and we tear them down. But then we want to be the first ones to box and, 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 and fight and fuss and cuss 
when somebody has something to say about us. We need to repent. You know, we always want to talk about fornication, homosexuality, and adultery, in drugs, and drinking, and cigarettes. But when are we just going to repent? Just from being mediocre. When God told you to stand out and you tried to hide your light under the bush. When are we going to repent? When we supposed to be salt and light that bring flavor and season into the world. And we walking around being bland and blah. All the sins are equal, right? So when you when, when you a liar, but you want to but you want to point the finger at the homosexual, yeah, you got real quiet and get here. Can you say amen for me? I gave you some candy today. Say amen to you. Understand the simplicity of just saying, Lord. I repent. Lord, I won't do that no more. Lord, I don't want to be in this place no more. Because I can't leave this guy down here. Look upon me. Come on up. Because your, you, your value is not on the ground. Your value is in the house of God. Come on up here with me. Your value is in the house of God. Your, your, you, your, your story of why you was on the ground brings value to the house of God. Do y'all understand the fact that you were in the place of being wrong and God's showing you that you were wrong and you repenting from being wrong brings value to the house of God? Because you now have a testimony of what God has done for you. You now have a testimony that you can share with the guy who's been around 20 years. Because what happened 20 years ago, they didn't have the same stuff that was going on today. Sin has amplified itself. It's way worse today. Than it was then. So we have to we have a job to do, people of God. Those who are watching on the live stream, we have a job to do. And we the first job we have to do is to repent. So stay out the twenty dollar line until you repent. Stop running from church to church looking for prophetic word for prophetic word for prophetic word until you repent. There are processes and steps that God ain't, ain't short-circuiting for nobody. So until you do it the right way, the refreshing and the release can't come. But I know I need refreshing. So I'm going to repent. Everyone standing up on your feet. Lift your hands before the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, God, we as a church, those who are physically in this house, those who may be virtually watching, we are repenting before you now. Lord, we're coming before you, God, because we have left too many people on the ground and frowned when somebody helped to pick them up. Lord, we are sorry for the things that we have done. The things that we have said. The things, God, and the ways that we have approached our walk with you. Lord, I apologize and I repent, Lord, not just for me, but my fellow pastors and apostles and bishops, God. Lord, that who have become so churchified 
Lord, that we forget about how that we are supposed to worship you. Lord, I pray, and I pray this prayer of repentance, God, because, Lord, we want a refreshing and a release to come. Lord, not just to be able to preach, but to be able to live a winning life. Lord, we, I pray on behalf of spreading the word ministries, spreading the word worship center. Lord, I pray this prayer of repentance right now. Lord, we're sorry for the way that we have approached you because we have been around in a way for a while. We're sorry, God, for being late all the time. We're sorry, God, for, Lord, not being excited all the time. We're sorry, God, for not, Lord, fulfilling our purpose and walking in our mission and our vision all of the time. We're sorry, God, for being slowful in our approach to living all the time. We're sorry, God, for being excuse makers. But, God, right now, we lift up our hands to you right now, God. And we say, God, send your time of refreshing. Come on, open your mouth, church, and began to talk to him. Say, Lord, send your time of refreshing. Come on, come on, ask him to send this time of refreshing. Send your time of refreshing, God. Send your time of refreshing, God. Send your time of refreshing, God. Send it down upon us, God. Let it rain down upon us, God. We don't want to be stale. We don't want to attract the pestilence of life that has tried to overrun us and who we are. But now in the name of Jesus, we say, Lord, bring it upon us. Revive us, God. Renew us, God. Requench us, God. We need you like never before Jesus we need you like never before Jesus we bless your holy name we honor your holy name and we say thank you God for re re just re receiving us in spite of us for receiving us in spite of us and we love you Lord we honor your name, God. You are so wonderful to us. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together right now. Come on, begin to praise him for the time of the release of the refreshing. Come on, begin to bless him. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, begin to thank him right now. Come on. Come on, thank him right now. Thank him right now. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. Thank you, God, for freeing us. Thank you, God, for healing us. Thank you, God, for renewing us. Thank you for doing it in our life, God. Oh, Jesus, we bless you right now, God. We bless you right now, God. We praise you right now, God. We praise you right now, Jesus. Oh, God, Lord, make me over, God. Make us over, God. Jesus, make us over. Make us over, make us over. Make us over, make us over. Make us over, make us over. We don't want to be stale. Lord, make me over. Lord, Make me over, make me over again, make me over again, hallelujah. Is there anyone today?